It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Hallelujah. Just give the Lord a beer and a praise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, my heart is just so full this morning. Because the last time when I was here and I preached on the subject of principle of divine prosperity, and I touch on the principle of covenant, the principle of blessings. That I know that our pastors have been preaching so well about the principles of prosperity because in their John verse 2 it says beloved I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health as your soul prospers it is God's will for you to prosper in all things number one Establish that in your spirit this morning. It is God's will. It might not be your will. It might not be the will of the community. It might not be the will of the nation. But let me remind all of you today that it is God's will for you to prosper. And for you to prosper in all things as your soul prospers. So God wants us to prosper in spirit, in soul, in body, in relationship, and also in finance. Because balance is always the key to life. That's why the Bible says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health as your soul prospers. As your soul prospers. Jesus talks about the value of the human soul when he said, what about if a man gains the whole world and loses his very own soul? So the Bible says, as your soul prospers, when the Bible talks about soul, it talks about your mind, it talks about your will, it talks about your emotion. But in the very core of your soul, there is your spirit. That's the part of you that God has placed inside of you that is born again from the moment you receive Jesus Christ. So we might have a soul, but unless we are born again, then our spirit man becomes alive. That's a part of us that is connected to God. That is a part of us that cries out to God. That's a part of us that longs for God that David said, in Psalm 42, as the deer pants for the water brooks, so my soul longs for thee. There's always a longing of the human soul, the human spirit, to know, to understand the God that created him in the first place. Because in the very depth of your being, there is a, 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 a fingerprint of God Almighty. It's a fingerprint. We'll always be longing to know our source. To know who our Father truly is. That's a part of us that longs to know our roots. 
That's a part of us that longs to know our identity. That's a part of us that longs to know the very purpose why I'm here on earth is the God part of you. So that it's only the Holy Spirit can come and, and fill the emptiness and the vacuum that is in the human soul. When we are prospering spiritually, it means that we have already been born again by the Spirit of God. We are filled with the Holy Spirit. We are being led by the Holy Spirit. We are being anointed by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God is flowing in you and through you. Jesus said, those who are thirsty, come and drink. And if they believe, Jesus said, out from their bellies flows rivers of living waters. That living water is a killing water. Everything that it touches, it is healed. Every barren land will be fertile again. Every barren tree will be able to bear its fruit. Every barren womb will be able to produce children. Every unproductive activities will become productive again. See, Jesus, in this verse, it talks about the prosperity of the soul. When your soul is prospering, it affects every area of your lives. It affects your mind. It affects your emotion. It affects your will. You will be able to make the right choice. It affects your body you'll be able to experience God's healing power because God is your healer. His word is a healing word and Christ is a healing Christ. The Holy Spirit is a healing spirit and the church is a healing community. So when we are in church, there's no excuse for you to be sick and to remain sick because this is the body of Christ and God's healing power is flowing in this church. It will heal you. It will strengthen you. It will make you whole again in spirit, soul, and body in Jesus' name. Just give the Lord a behead. So it is God's will for you to prosper in all things. So biblical prosperity is connected to your covenant relationship with God. Biblical prosperity is connected to your covenant relationship with God. So in there, John verse 2, it says, Beloved, I pray. But this morning, I'm not praying. This morning, I will declare. I will declare what the Word of God says. I will declare that you may prosper in all these. So this morning, I declare prosperity in all things for your life. Prosperity in all things for your family. Prosperity for all things in yourself. Prosperity in all things in your community. Prosperity in all things for the church. In the mighty and the powerful name of Jesus, I declare that and I decree it over your life this morning. You better believe it and receive it. If you believe it, say amen. amen. Because in Psalm 35, verse 27, it says, God find pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. God is happy. God is excited when his servant is prospering. God is happy when his children, when his servants 
if God is happy when his servants is prospering, how much more God is happy when his own children is prospering? Do you think that God is happy when you are weak spiritually? Do you think that God is happy when you're just living a normal Christian life, lukewarm, being a carnal Christian? Do you believe that God is excited with that kind of lifestyle? Do you think God is excited when your mind becomes a wandering mind? You wander everywhere in your mind? Do you think that God is happy when your mind is filled with worry and oppression and depression? God is not happy. God is not excited. It does not thrill the heart of God. Do you believe that God is happy when we are broke? When there is lack and insufficiency? Do you think that God is happy? God is not happy when we are broke. I'm not talking about what others think or what I think. I'm talking about what God thinks based on his word. Because God created all of us with a purpose. It's not a lower purpose, but it's a higher purpose. The Bible says that we were created in the image and the likeness of God. And we see right in the book of Genesis how God was introduced. That the Bible says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. That's how God was introduced. He was not introduced as a lazy God, as a city God, as a God who's walking around the park and the gardens, but he was introduced as a walking God. Walking God, walking God, walking God, walking God, walking God. When we know God that is a walking God, he walks in my heart, he walks in my mind, he walks in my hands, he walks in my feet. He walks in every area of my life. God is a walking God. Jesus said, as, my, as I see my father walking, I'm also walking. He's not a lazy God. He's not a laid back God. He's a walking God. The Bible says, whatever your hand finds to do, this hand must not be a slack hand. It must not be a lazy hand. It must not be a laid back hand. It must be a walking hand. Finding things to do. Hallelujah. There's a lot of room in heaven, but there's no place to sit down. You study what will happen in heaven. We'll not just go there and sit around and have a, and have a happy, happy hour. There's a lot of room in heaven, but there's no place to sit down. Hallelujah. So heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. You better start walking. You better start Allowing that hands to start to move, hallelujah. You better start allowing your mind to walk, hallelujah, to think and think ahead. Think of the future. Don't think of yourself. Think of your children. Think of the next generation. Hallelujah. That's how God was introduced as a walking God. He created the heavens and the earth, the spiritual and the natural. He created them both. <laughs> But how was the wall introduced? The wall was introduced to us. It was without form. It was empty. Void. It was dark. That's how the wall was introduced in the book of Genesis. Empty. Void. Dark. Without form. Disconnected. It was all water. But the spirit of the Lord was hovering upon the waters. No, the Spirit of God can be moving in a mighty and a powerful way, but you can still be in the dark. You can still experiencing that emptiness, that void. For example, just take it as an example, although nobody was born in that environment. Just take it as an example. If you are born in that environment, when the wall was without form, it was dark, it was empty, void. That 
environment becomes normal to you. Just become normal. Oh, uh, this, is, this is me. This is uh, how I was brought up. I was brought up in the dark. I was brought up, you know, with nothing formed. My life was disconnected. Everything becomes normal. And then the Bible says the Spirit of God was moving, but nothing changes. There was no transformation. The Bible says, and God said, and God said, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Until the light comes, then you can know that darkness starts to disappear. Oh, there is a better life. I see light. I really don't know, you know, not really comprehend and appreciate light when I spend about two weeks in the rainforest of Congo. And there was darkness, no light. When I came after two weeks in Kinshasa and I on the switch and there was light, I said, oh, there is light. I never appreciate light until I spent two weeks in the dark. I never appreciate fresh drinking water and tap and even fresh shower. When I opened the shower and I said, oh, fresh shower. Elimination. Our eyes of understanding must be eliminated. That's why the Bible says the entrance of your word brings light. When the light of the word of God, it turned on the switch. But it might turn on the switch to your spirit man. Your spirit man becomes alive. But your mind is still in the dark. Might see some spark of the light. Might be the light from your soul radiates into your mind. Remember, your mind must also be enlightened. One of the greatest problems is ignorance to the truth. The Bible says when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. Hallelujah. When we are in a house, this light is only for this room. There is a light on the corridor. There is a light in every room. There is a light, different sets of light in the passage. You need the right light in every part of your life. In a spirit, soul, body, emotions. Hallelujah. How you speak, how you, how you behave. Hallelujah. In, in, in every area of your lives, we need to be enlightened. That's why the Bible says God wants us to prosper in all things. In all things as our soul prospers. And God said, nothing happens until there is a declaration. So today I'm declaring that your struggle in life today, it has come to an end. Your struggle in life has come to an end. I declare that over your life and your family and your generation in the mighty and the powerful name of Jesus. You better believe and receive it and say amen. amen. And God said, let the waters above the firmaments and the waters below. Let the firmament arise and it rise. It's like a dome. And he said, hang up there, hang up there, hang up there, hang up there. And he called it, your name shall be called heaven. And between heaven and the sea, he said, it'll be called atmosphere. Atmosphere. So that people who live here can breathe, can live, and enjoy that atmosphere. I'm just using my imagination. 
how God created the universe. Now, the heavens are, what is that? Distinction, distinction. Illumination, when the light turns on to your spirit, when the light of God turns into your mind, when the light of God turns into the areas of your finance, when the light of God turns into the area of your ministry. Hallelujah. That's illumination and there it comes distinction. Distinction. Separation between the heavens and the seas. And he said, you shall be called heaven. It's like a dome. It's hanging. There's an atmosphere. Let the air come. Breathe. Hallelujah. God speaks to the sea and said, let the dry land come forth. And the dry land arises from the ocean. And God said, you turned into a dry land. The rest of the water turned into the sea. God was setting up boundaries. Boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. Hallelujah. God is a God of order. He's not a God of disorder. Amen. Hallelujah. In the beginning, all of us were just water. And now God begins to form boundaries. You have to know your boundaries. You have to know distinction. You have to know your gifting. You have to know your calling. You have to know the potential, the abilities that is in you. And God will set up boundaries. Boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. Understand God's boundary for your life. Understand God's boundary for your calling. Understand God's boundary for the things that God has called you to do in life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Boundaries, 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 boundaries. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You are staring at me. I'm a little bit ashamed. Because you are staring at me. Hallelujah. Just give the Lord a big hand of praise. Then God established what we call the principle of sustainability and continuation. He looked to the dry land and he said, let the grass come forth. Let the herbs with seeds come forth. Let the tree with fruits and seed in it come forth. Came forth. God was establishing the principle of seed time and harvest. And the principle of seed time and harvest is the principle of sustainability and also for continuation. God said the fruit is to sustain you today, but the seed you have to plant that will sustain you for the rest of your life. <laughs> huh? In the first beginning, God did not plant anything. He just speak. But he said, this is how I created the world. I just speak once and I will not speak again. But I've established this principle and you have to live by this principle to sustain you every day and also to sustain you as you plant your seed for the rest of your life. Say amen. amen. And God created the fish, the sharks, the whales, and the birds that fly in the air. Hallelujah. To fill up the ocean. To fill up the space in the air of the birds. Hallelujah. And God saw it was good. Placing things in its rightful place. Oh, you have to be in your rightful place. You have to be in the rightful place. Hallelujah. The fish must remain in the ocean to leave. Hallelujah. The birds must remain in the sky to leave. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The bird, once he goes into the ocean, she will drown. Hallelujah. While the fish go into the dry land, it will die. Be in your rightful place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you still with me? Are you still following me? Hallelujah. Say yes. Say amen. Hallelujah. When you say amen, you'll pull things out from me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you go like this, nothing will come out. I will also be doing like this. Hallelujah. Say amen. amen. 
Say yes, hallelujah. Say hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah. I believe, I receive it, I declare it, hallelujah. Let, let's talk, let's interact. Hallelujah. We're talking Bible here. This is how God created the world. Hallelujah. And then God said, let there be cows, bull of a cow and goat and horses and camels and lions. Let it come forth. Fill the earth. Fill the earth. Hallelujah. And then the Bible says, and God bless them. God said, be fruitful and multiply. Another word for fruitful, be increased. Increased. Another word is produce. You have to produce. But not only produce, but he said, be fruitful and multiply. What God was saying, you have to produce and you also have to reproduce. Amen. Then to somebody that said, are you reproducing? Then to some other person that said, if you are not a producer, I will pray today for you to start producing. Amen. Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. And then God said, on the sixth day, let's create men in our image and also in our likeness. And when he created men in his image and his likeness, in the likeness of God, he created men. He created you. Why I'm saying all of this? Because God was creating this beautiful world, not for him, but for you. God was thinking of you when he created the whole universe. You were on his mind when he was creating the universe. God has to create the right environment, the right atmosphere. And then the Bible says when God created man in his own image and likeness, and God blessed them. He blessed them. And the Bible says when God created mankind, when he was created every living creature, he was saying it is good. But when he created mankind, he said, it is very, very, very good. Very good. Then to somebody I said, you are very, very good. <laughs> Who say that you are not good? When God says that you are very good. Look at yourself and say, I'm very good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He breathed his nostrils. He deposited his essence. He deposited his DNA. And when he blessed them, he downloaded. He empowered them to prosper. He downloaded everything that they need. And whatever it takes for them to subdue, to have dominion, to rule over every living creature that is on the earth because God said the heaven belongs to me but the earth I've given to man. Amen. Say amen. amen. We are not talking about what I think about God. That's theology. I'm talking about what God thinks about you. What God thinks about your family. What God thinks about you. You were on the Lord's mind even to this very day. Hallelujah. Very good. In the likeness of God, which means that God liked me. So it does not matter whether you like me or whether you don't like me. What really matters is that God, my heavenly Father, liked me. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, God liked me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then the Bible says that God planted a garden. He created men. He empowered men. Whatever he needs, whatever it takes, 
he downloaded it to his hard drive. Download it to his hard drive. See, I'm not making this up. I'm discovering. I'm just discovering. I'm just discovering who you are. In the eyes of God, in the, in the presence of God. Because he was the one who created all of us. I've read a lot of books. But I have determined my heart to read the Bible. To commit myself to what the word of God says. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He planted a garden, even God himself. He was just speaking and everything comes. But when it comes to the garden, God came and he planted a garden. He did not wish for a garden. You don't have to wish that one day you'll become a millionaire. You better start planting your seed to what you believe. Hallelujah. You better start acting on what you believe. God planted a garden. He did not wish for it, but he planted it. And then he landscape. And then he irrigate. There were rivers. And in that river, he put gold. He put silver. He put precious stone. For who? For who? For who? For God? No, 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 no. Not for God. For you. 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 See? Can you see? Just see it. I know it has to take the change of mindset. For you to believe. But that mindset will be changed today. Then you start to see yourself the way that God created you to be. Not the way that we were raised up. Not the way, you know, based on, a, or on the culture that we were raised in. But based on God's created purpose for our lives. He put gold. And he covered that place with his presence. But you know what happened later on? And because of the fall, we know that was broken. And the blessings that mankind supposed to experience, curse came upon them. But we praise God for Jesus. Because Jesus was able to restore what Adam lost in the Garden of Eden. And he's known as the second Adam. And the Bible says, if God cannot withheld his praises, his only son, to himself, if he is able to release it so that mankind can be redeemed, mankind can be saved, how much more that God can release all what he has to bless, His children. You know, this morning, I would just like to go to the oldest book in the Bible. Oldest book in the Bible. And that's the book of Job. Job was written about 400 years before Moses wrote the five books in the Bible, which is called the Pentateuch. Genesis to Deuteronomy. Most of Moses' writing, he was quoting from some of the, the reference regarding creation that Job was talking about. And this is what he said. Job 22, verse 21. And I want you, if you have your Bible, turn to your Bible. I want you to mark this verse because there is the key in this verse to prosperity in all things. Now, acquaint yourself with him and be at peace. So the Bible says you have to acquaint yourself with God and be at peace with God. What the Bible is saying, get to know God intimately, personally, relationally, and also practically. Get to know God well. And be at peace with God. Because the Bible says, if you established 
that element, knowing God, loving God, admiring God and honoring Him, and be at peace with God, the Bible says in the book of Job, thereby good will come to you. Hands up if you are, if you are expecting good to come to you. Good will come to you. All of us, we want good to come to us. None of us, we want bad things to come to us. We don't want sickness to come to us. We don't want poverty to come to us. We might be in that situation, but we don't want to remain there. We want good to come to us. And the Bible says, that's the key for good to come to you. And I want to declare today that from today, the bad the unfruitfulness, the discouragement, the worries of life is coming to an end today. And good is coming to your life. Good is coming to your household today in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 22. Receive please, he's begging you. Receive please instruction from his mouth. We better receive God's word into our hearts. Receive from God. There are so many teachings. There are so many ideology. But the Bible says, receive instruction from his mouth. Words, instructions, corrections, direction that comes from the mouth of God. That's why we must always go to the word of God. Read the word of God and receive the word of God. And then it says, and lay up his word in your heart. You receive and you store up the word of God in your heart. Store it up in your heart. Memorize God's word. Memorize it. Keep it in your heart. Store it up in your heart. God said to Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate in it day and night. And you have to observe what it says that you must do. You have to observe all what it says. And you must have that willingness to do. Willingness to do. Store it up. His instruction, his teaching, his commandments. And you must have that willingness to do. To be the doers of the word. And then the Bible says. And you will be prosperous. In all of your ways. In all of your ways and you will also have good success. Lay up the word of God in your heart. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. Verse 23. If you return to Almighty now. Church it's time to return to Almighty. Return to God. Let's return to the place of prayer. Let's return to the word of God. Let's return to the place of worship. Let's return to the place of seeking the face of God. Let's return to the presence of God. If you return to the Almighty, you will be built up. For those of you who are down, those of you who are weak in spirit, I want to declare today, your weakness is coming to an end today. In the mighty name of Jesus, I see the Spirit of God is strengthening your faith, strengthening every part of your being in the mighty name of Jesus. Every burden is released. Every yoke is destroyed over your life in Jesus' name. You will be built up. You will remove iniquity far from your tent. You will hate sin. You will hate wickedness. You will hate carnality. There is no place for us to entertain sin and sinful behavior. You will hate it. You don't want to entertain it. You will remove iniquity far from your tents. Listen to verse 24. Listen to verse 24. 
It says, then you will lay your gold in the dust. Then you will lay your gold in the dust. You'll walk on gold. You'll walk on gold. You see, this is the key. This is what the Bible is talking about, okay? See the process? Then you will lay gold in the dust. And the gold of Ophir among the stones of the brooks. Listen to verse 25. Yes, the Almighty will be your gold. You see how much you are worth? People are saying the richest preacher in the world is about, what, 150 million or something. When he was mentioned about this, he said, that's an insult. I'm not worth 150 million. I'm worth more than that. Because the Bible says that God will be our goal. <laughs> you want to ask how much a real preacher is worth? You know, Philippians 4, my God, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. <laughs> That's how much you are worth as a covenant believer. People are talking about the richest man in the world. Let me say, you are the richest person in the world. Hallelujah. You are the richest person in the world. Hallelujah. When God becomes your goal and that time is coming, you better receive it in Jesus' name because that is your covenant right and that is your covenant privilege and that is your covenant benefits in Jesus' name. Yes, the Almighty will be our goal and your precious silver. <laughs> when the Lord said, silver and gold is mine. When your father says, silver and gold is mine. When you are a covenant child, you don't have to go and beg. You have to know you have a right. You have access to what your father has. So you don't have to struggle to prosper. You prosper by right. That's your right as a covenant child of God. Some of you are just like this. It is my prayer that those of you who are receiving revelation that you will receive, hallelujah, what God is revealing to you in your spirit right now. <laughs> Listen to verse 26. Then you will have your delight in the Almighty. <laughs> so when you are wealthy, listen, when you are wealthy, say with me, wealth. Yeah. Wealthy. Yeah. When you are wealthy, it does not create enmity with God. Because Abraham, he was the father of faith. He was a super wealthy man. But he was also a friend of God. Listen to this. When you have gold, just like dust, and silver. Listen to what it says. For then you will have delight in the Almighty. You will rejoice in the Almighty. It does not take away from God, but it connects you to God. It takes you closer to God because you know God is our source. <laughs> and then what happens? When you have a lot of wealth, when you have a lot of wealth, you don't close your mind 
and you run away from God. You don't close your mind and you don't come and attend church. When God blesses you, when you become wealthy, when you have assets, when you have properties, when you have business, when God starts to bless you more and more and more with gold and silver and cash, the Bible says, you will lift up your face to God. Because you know he's my source. The business is not my source. My company is not my source. The government, the nation is not my source. But God Almighty is my source. Listen to verse 27. You will make a prayer to him. He will hear you. You will pray and God will hear you. That's why the Bible says that God supplies seed to the sower. He only supplies seed to the sower. I remember when I learned this more than 30 years ago, I said to the Lord, Lord, I choose to be a sower. But I don't have anything to sow. I learned from the scripture that you said that you always supply seed. Would you please supply me some seed so that I can sow? Ten minutes after saying that prayer while I was in a convention, God gave me a seed. And I took that money. I know it is my whole seed and I sow it. Because it says he supplied the seed to the sower and then he multiplies the seed that is sown. From the moment I sow that seed, I start to see God begins to multiply in that convention. And then it says, and he increases the fruit of your righteousness. Righteousness is right standing with God. Because I saw the hand of God, I saw God sticks to his word when he starts to multiply that seed. And I see the return coming back. But the multiplication at that time, I knew it's a multiplication of my seed. I need to sow a lot of seeds. So whatever the Lord Release into my hand, I know it is my seed. That's where I start to teach about faith giving. That's where I start teaching that you can be a receiving and folding agent of God's resources. And for the last 30 years, I always look back to that moment. And God has supplied seeds upon seeds upon seeds into my hand and I've sowed it into the kingdom of God. That's why we are in more than 100 nations around the world because when we sow the seeds that God has supplied into our hands. But it says that God increases the fruit of our righteousness. Because when you call upon God, then God will answer your prayer. Because the Bible says, God finds pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Hallelujah. And you will declare a thing. Listen. And you also declare a thing. That's why I'm declaring. That's why I'm declaring. And it will be established for you. So today, I want to declare. The are your weakness. Your struggle, your worry in life is over. In Jesus' name. Listen to this. And it will be established for you, so light will shine on your ways. Light. When they cast you down and say, and say, Exaltation will come. Then he will save the humble person. He will even deliver the one who is not innocent. When the world is saying everything is going down, the economy, the financial, when everything is going down, you can declare that exhortation is coming. From that moment, I learned that giving, when I learned that giving, 
will lift you up and I commit myself to it. I did not see giving as a kind of supporting the work of God. I see it as a privilege. Because I'm too small to sponsor the work of God. You are too small to sponsor the project of God. You are too small. We're all too small to sponsor. So you don't have to see your giving as a donation. You don't have to see a giving. You give so that you can receive. This principle will work by itself. But you must have the right attitude. You cannot be carnal givers. You cannot be carnal Christians. You must be spiritual in your giving. You have to give with faith. You have to give with the spirit of believing and expecting the promises of God. You have to be spiritual. And you have to learn to keep your priority right. Because in Matthew verse 6, it talks about the key. It talks about the vital key in this kind of prosperity. And I want to declare to you prosperity is coming your way. Hallelujah. There will never be a day that there will be lack of food and water and money in a household in the mighty and the powerful name of Jesus. Because in Matthew chapter 6, okay. Verse 25. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life. Say with me, do not worry. What you will eat or what you will drink, not about your body, what you'll put on, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into buns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them all. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubic to his stature? So why do you have to worry? About clothing, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, and neither they toil nor spin. And Edda, I told you, not even Solomon in all his glory was not array like of this. Now if God so clothe the grass of the fields, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Listen to verse 31. Therefore do not worry, saying, what I shall eat or what I shall drink, or what I shall wear. For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all of these things. Basic needs. Food, shelter, clothing, water. Might need some car. Children to go to school. That's your basic needs. What Jesus was saying. Why do we have to worry? All the people in the, in the world, they worry about what they eat, they wear, they drink, about their daily lives. Why do you have to worry? Why do you have to worry? But Jesus gives us a clue and he said, no, the world seeks after these things. They seek after these things. But you don't have to seek after these things. I know that you need it. What Jesus was saying, I know that you need clothing. I know that you need food. I know that you need a shelter. I know that you need to have your own house. And you will have your own house in Jesus' name. Amen. You better believe that one day you will own your own house. Amen. Start believing. If you have one house, you'll have two house, three house, four house. Make it as an investment. Hallelujah. God knows. He knows that you need these things. You might be praying for a car. God knows that you need a car. You might be praying for your education. God knows that you need that education. Might need a promotion. God knows that you need that promotion. You might need to start a business. God knows that you 
have to start a business and you will start a business. God knows what God is saying. I know that you need all these things. So what must I do? I must come to God and I said, Lord, I know that you want me to have these things. And I want to tell you, I also know that I know that I need these things. You better be honest. Some of us, when we said, oh, I need a car, I, I pray slowly so that people might tease me. Oh, you are very, want to show off. I rebuke that show off in Jesus' name. Because there will be a day you will not be showing off things that God has blessed you with, but the things that God has blessed you with will just show up by themselves. Yeah. Jesus said, I know. You need education. You need to be ill. You need a house. You need clothing. You need a pair of shoes. You need bags. You need to start a business. I know. I know that you need more money. I know. So when God said that, he know, why do we always come to God and say, Lord, just give me your grace. Don't give me more money. Or else I will forget you. <laughs> religious spirit. That is a religious spirit. Hallelujah. God knows that in your heart, you want to be the best businessman in town, in the nation, in the areas of expertise. But God said, I know that the war seek after these things. But he said, I want you to learn. You don't have to seek after these things the way that the world seeks after these things. I want to teach you a lesson. I know that you need these things. But I want you to put your priority right. Don't put things first. What Jesus said in verse 33, seek ye first. You put me first. Seek me first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. What Jesus was saying, seek first the kingdom of God and its demand. <laughs> the kingdom of God has its demand. And this is the very hardest thing for people to do because we are self-centered, self-seeking. So for you to put yourself out from you, put yourself out from you, and put God first in you. <laughs> Turn to somebody and said, put me out. Put God first. Put God in. All of us. We want me first, me first, me first, me, 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 my, my, my. But God said, put you out. Throw you out. Throw you out from yourself. And put me first in yourself. I have to be first in yourself. Hallelujah! I want you to declare... Me out. Me out. Self out. Self out. Jesus, in. Jesus in. Your kingdom in. Your kingdom, in. Kingdom, first. kingdom first. In my life. In my life. That's the secret. That's the secret. That's the secret. Ha ha. That's the secret. You know, I was, I was studying this morning. Suddenly, suddenly I begin to weep. I begin to weep. I remember my mind goes back 35 years ago. When we were sitting, I was sitting in a tree beside our old home that we started the ministry. My wife was pregnant with our son. I've already left my job seeking the mind of God, sitting under the tree 
When the Lord spoke to me, take my word to the nation. Take my word to the nation. The Lord showed me the illustration of the tree. Because it's root, it's hidden. And this verse came to me. Seek it first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then it says, and all these things will be supernaturally added unto you. If you put me first, my kingdom, for my sake, everything that you need that I know and you know, it will be added to you. It will be provided. I wept this morning because this verse became so real. I was sitting under the tree, not knowing where to go and what to do. What my life will be. And this scripture came to me and said, Seek, son, seek it first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. From the very moment I heard that word, it was reminded to me early this morning. I made a vow. I made a vow. I said, Lord, for the rest of my life, here's what I intended to do. I made a vow. Seek it first. When God spoke to Joseph, to, 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 to um, Jacob, and he said, I will keep you, I will bless you. I will protect you. I will bring you back to your father's place. The Bible says Jacob made a vow. He said, Lord, because you keep your promise, everything that you bless me with, I'll give 10%. He made a vow. When God speaks to you, you have to make that vow. You have to make that covenant. Have to make that promise. And today I look back. My heart is full with rejoicing. Because I have seen. I have witnessed the faithfulness of God. Over the years, God's provision. Seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added. You will experience God's provision. It will always come through the hand of men because people will give to your bosom. It's through the hand of God. God will provide things supernaturally from an unknown source. I see the hand of God releasing his divine provision from an unknown source to his children this morning. God's provision can also come through your own hands, through your work, through your skill, through your business. And also God's provision can also come through the hands of your enemy. Because in Mark chapter 10, verse 29 and 30, Jesus said, let the choir come. Jesus said, as surely I say to you, there is no one who has left his house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel's sake shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution and age to come eternal life. No one has left their home Houses, family, status, and the privileges, and the benefits that this world offer to you have left that behind for my sake, for his kingdom's sake, for the gospel's sake that Jesus said he will have hundredfold return in this life and also eternal life in the age to come. I prophesy, when you put the kingdom of God first in your life, 
for you to become a kingdom seeker, for you to become a kingdom dreamer, for you to become a kingdom addicted. When the kingdom of God becomes addicted, what you are thinking is about the kingdom. It's the establishment of the kingdom of God on earth. It's the extension of the kingdom of God. You know, the church is a blessed body. The church is a blessed community. Because the church is the expression of the body of Christ. The church is God's model to establish his kingdom on earth. And mission and church planting is extending the kingdom of God on earth. So when you connect your life, your gifts, your talents, your resources, your seed to the establishment of the kingdom of God and also the extension of the work of the kingdom of God, God will add all of these things that you need supernaturally for you and for your generation and above all, eternal life in the age to come. That's the key. Today, I really thank God. Brother Pede is here. When we were in Cambodia, I asked them to share their testimony. Brother Amitesh shared his testimony. Brother John was taking his camera, so that's why he didn't share his testimony. Brother Joe Kurlo shared his testimony. Brother Peter said his testimony. And Brother Peter said, I have been 33 years. I was a young boy when I joined the church. He said, at that time I have all my hair. Today I don't have any more hair. I'm just repeating what he says. <laughs> and he said, when we started, we don't have any church. Don't have any buildings. Don't have any ministry. Nations around the world, there was no world mission. No schools, Bible schools, so on, so on, so on. And he said, I've been in the church. I grew up in the church for the last 33 years. And I have seen what God has done. God has been faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. So I really thank God for all of us because we are here. We are all kingdom seeker. Kingdom dreamer. We are pursuers of the kingdom. And the Bible has promised that all of these things shall be added unto you. May I prophesy to you today there will be no more lack in a household from today onwards. From today onwards, you'll never experience lack or you'll not even struggle again for the payments of your bill, for the payments of whatever you have to pay in the mighty and the powerful name of Jesus. Your struggling to meet your daily needs is coming to an end today in Jesus' name. And the blessings of God is coming over your life. Your children, your children, your children, your children, and your children's children, and your children's children, in Jesus' name. When the wall is saying, everything is down, I'm declaring that you are going up, and you'll never go down again, in Jesus' name. You'll never go down again, in Jesus' name. We might be down, but we are not out. But let me say today, today is the beginning that you will start to go up and up and up and up and up. Because exhortation comes from the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Just give the Lord a behind of praise. Let's all stand.
a word for somebody that is in this place. And the Lord really put this in my heart as I was preparing for this this morning. In Genesis 26, when there was a famine in the land, people were living. And Isaac, who is the son of covenant, son of promise, he also wanted to leave. And then the Lord spoke to him and said, remain in the land because I will be with you and I will bless you. And God is speaking to somebody today. God said, you have to stay where you are. Don't leave that place. Don't leave that business. Don't leave that vocation. Don't leave where you are. Stay in that place because God is saying to you, I will be with you and I will bless you. And then the Bible says that Isaac plowed the land. He walked on what he believed. He acted on what he believed. And he sowed and he reaped the same year hundredfold blessing. And the Lord was speaking to me this morning. There will be people in the church. Their turnaround is at hand in your, that service, in this service. May I say to you, turn around. Is at hand right now in your life because God has promised that he will be with you and he will bless you. And the Bible says that God blessed Isaac and he began to prosper and he continued prospering until he be, became prosperous. And may I declare to you today, today you'll begin to prosper. And you will continue to prosper until you become prosperous in all things in Jesus' name. If you believe that, receive it in Jesus' name. Father, we bless you and we thank you for your people. We release the words that's already been declared by faith in the hearts and the lives of the people. We already declare, oh God, that they will prosper in all things as the soul prospers. Lord, it's already been declared that their struggle for their daily sustenance is coming to an end. It's already been declared this morning that prosperity, they will continue to prosper until they become prosperous. 
has already been declared in Jesus' name. And we seal and we decree that word. Let the declaration come forth and manifest itself. In the lives of your people. Thank you, Lord, for lifting up your people. Lift up our spirit. Lift up our faith. Lift up, oh God, our thinking. Elevate, oh God, every part of our being. In the mighty and the powerful name of Jesus. And I release prosperity in all things. In the lives of your people. Strengthen your people. Bless your people. Anoint your people. And send your people to their home with your blessings. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we bless you. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Hallelujah. May the blessings of the Lord, may the riches of his blessings be upon you. And may his face continue to shine upon you. May he continue to lead you and to guide you. To begin your path to be prosperous. And continue prospering until you become prosperous in all things. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. And amen. And amen. May God bless you all. May God bless you all. May God bless the choir. Hallelujah. May God bless you all. Just turn around and bless somebody. Bless somebody. Bless each other this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Have a great service next week. Please pray. I will be in Hawaii next week. And the following week, I think I'll be in Nandi. The following week, I think I'll be in the United States of America. Then the following week, I'll be back here at the World Harvest Center. So let's continue to pray for one another. Bless one another. Hallelujah. Prophesy to one another. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. You are a blessed people. Blessed people. In Jesus' name. Amen. It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth.